my family and I lived in this house. We moved around a lot, but this house ended up being our home for a good number of years. This is where I had my first real experiences. It kind of started with unexplainable things at first. I'd hear knocking on doors and walls. The floors would creak or you'd hear footsteps and someone walking up and down the stairs when no one was on them. Doors would randomly open and close and many, many objects would be moved around the house, sometimes broken. Then, one day I saw him, a shadow man. All I remember was that he was tall and entirely black as dark as midnight. I never felt any hostility from this man. I used to have a strong sensitivity to auras and vibes, and this man didn't have a bad one. I just felt like he wanted to be recognised and acknowledged, almost like he wanted a friend. My family never saw him, but they believed me when I spoke about him, as they could hear him walk around the house, saw him use doors, or when he moved things. My mum eventually had a baby boy, and she made me promise not to tell him about the man. I never did. In fact, soon after my brother was born, I never saw the man again. But one day, as I was heading downstairs, my baby brother came screaming and crying, running out of the living room. I was scared he'd hurt himself, but he started screaming, It's the man! It's the man! As he does, a toy car following him out of the room. I was in shock when I saw it. My mum lost it on me, it took so long to convince her that I never told him about the man. This then happened a lot. He'd scream and cry, running to my mum about the man, and always a toy would follow him or turn itself on. But it was never the same toy. We then eventually moved, partly as mum was scared and didn't believe me the man wasn't a threat. We then moved to a new house. Everything was fine at first, but then weird things started to happen. Things that were pushed back on the side would fly off the counter and be smashed. We again heard strange noises and doors moving. Then I had three experiences that I remember so vividly. The first, I was wearing shorts. I felt something brush against my leg and then lick it. We had dogs, but they weren't allowed upstairs. So I went to take them downstairs and I saw there was no dog. They were asleep downstairs. The second, I was alone at the house. I was singing along to a song when I heard a female voice singing with me. As I kept singing, the voice was getting closer, but something felt off about this voice and I knew I didn't want it near me. So I shut off my music and stopped singing. The voice and presence disappeared. I replayed the song and sang along to it, but I didn't hear the voice again. The third one is arguably the weirdest. I had an open-faced wardrobe that was thin but very tall. It was pressed up against my bed, and at the bottom of it was a kit for a metal car I was yet to build, with loose pieces everywhere. I woke up one morning to see my wardrobe on the floor, but what was weird was that it had rotated 90 degrees. I never heard it fall. My mum walked by my room and asked what I'd done. I said it wasn't me. I hadn't woken her or anyone else in the house. I had a really difficult time lifting and rotating this wardrobe, but as I did, a corner of the wardrobe tore a huge gash into my bed, something it didn't when it had fallen. Still to this day, I have no idea how this wardrobe fell, rotated, woke no one, and didn't damage my bed. Nothing happened for years and years after this. This is when I started to stop believing. I know these things happened, but I questioned if maybe there were excuses for them, or maybe I just imagined or forgot things. Early this year, we lost my nan suddenly and violently to cancer. It was my first real death as an adult. One day I went shopping and usually I have no interest in apples. I literally never buy them, yet I saw some pink lady apples and just decided to buy them. Later that night as I was going to bed, I heard some knocking in my flat. It worked its way round my kitchen and towards my adjacent bedroom. As it neared my bed, the knocking stopped. Then I heard crinkling plastic right by my ear. I thought it was a neighbour as I had no plastic by my bed and went to sleep. That night I woke up in the middle of the night craving food. 
I randomly picked a pink lady apple. It was one of the best things I'd ever eaten. It was so good, I had another. As I was getting back into my bed, I heard crinkling plastic again. It was the exact same sound. Then under my foot, I felt some bubble wrap that I'd forgotten to put in the bin earlier that day. I went to sleep, just ignoring what I'd realized, telling myself that there was no way something had stood on that bubble wrap a few hours earlier, right beside my bed. I later told my mom how much I loved the pink lady apples. She then told me they were my nan's favorite apples. So in 2013, my parents were just divorced and I was around 11. My dad had just found a new house to buy from an old couple that passed away. Anyway, when we got into the house, everything seemed fine, but you know, it felt weird being out of my childhood home and in this new environment. However, the house was really nice and it had three floors. The third floor was previously an apartment for the old family's daughter and was really sweet. I got the whole third floor to myself, which sounds a bit spoiled, but honestly, I think my dad was just trying to compensate for the divorce. For the first year, nothing happened and all was well, but 2014 is where my weird events started. I should mention, my father is completely blind and has been for around 40 years. I was sitting next to him talking as he drank from a pop can. He sat it down as we talked and I looked down at it. I saw it move a few inches and suddenly stop. And for me being 12 at the time, I was horrified. And I told my dad about it and of course, he didn't believe it being anything negative because he's religious. That was the real start of everything. A few weeks later, I was sitting in my dining room alone at night doing my homework. And I had one of those long dinner tables due to the family being big. I was sitting at the head of the table I'm rolling a pencil down the table and going to get it because I was a huge procrastinator. Anyway, one time I rolled it, it randomly stopped and it rolled back to me like someone pushed it. I was anxious, but didn't think much of it. But looking back now, I know what it was. Going into 2015, I started to feel uneasy only on the third floor and I didn't know why. It was the winter of that year and I had a space heater set up in my room because it gets cold up on my floor due to the heat of the house not being connected up there. I walked into my room after I just arrived from my mom's house since they split custody. It was dark in my room and very cold. I had my back turned from the space heater as I set up my Xbox and then all of a sudden the space heater turned on and I heard the beep of it turning on. As soon as that happened I felt chills down my spine like someone was watching me or trying to get my attention. After that, I started seeing dark figures in the night. It was darker than dark. I'm not really sure how to explain it, but sometimes I could make out figures and at this point, as I was getting older, I was getting very uncomfortable. It got so bad to the point where I would wake up in the middle of the night and see things looking right at me. They didn't have any distinct features, but I could just tell they were staring. I had to start sleeping with the lights on to stop how uneasy I was. After 2015, not much happened until 2018 because I slept with the lights on. I figured by age 16, I shouldn't be afraid of that and so much time has passed that I basically forgot about it. I should also note occasionally, even with the lights on, I would still get chills down my spine. In 2018, I started dating my now ex-girlfriend and I had her over to my dad's house and she would tell me months later that the first time she went into my room, she instantly felt uneasy and ever since. When she told me that, I told her all that I've experienced and she was scared to come back to my dad's house. I eventually convinced her like a week later and when she came back, we were laying in my bed and she had this sticker on her finger from like a new piece of clothing I had. It was a small sticker about the size of a fingernail with a little M on it. We were both talking then all of a sudden it flew off her finger and stuck to the wall. There was no wind or anything and she instantly teared up and would rarely come back after that. In December, I was over at her house and watching ghost adventures with her and her sister. Then 
I told her I was going to lay down for a little nap in her room because I worked all day. I was laying in the bed alone when I heard someone whisper right into my ear as if they were standing right over me. Hey. I quickly jumped back in shock and ran into the living room and asked if either of them did that. And they both had a confused look on their faces. My girlfriend at the time knew I wasn't lying about what I heard due to the sticker experience. I went home later that night around 2am and was taking a joking video as I drove up to my house mocking ghost adventures because I thought it was so overdramatic it was hilarious. Anyway, as I pulled into my driveway I saw down a back street a blacked out figure staring right at me and then it started walking towards me. I quickly jumped out of the car as it walked towards me and ran to my house and entered the pin to unlock the door as soon as I entered my house. I looked out the window. No one was there. I FaceTimed my girlfriend and told her about everything. Needless to say, I left my lights on that night. The next day, I promised her I'd go thrift shopping with her because she loved it. It was never really my thing, but I was with her, so it seemed fun. When I got to Goodwill, we were looking around and my back started to burn really, really bad. I went into the changing room and took off my shirt and I had three scratches on my back and another two right below it and it was red hot. I know I didn't catch myself on anything or get scratched. I called her in and she was genuinely afraid now. A week later, I was in school and I started to feel that burn sensation on my chest. But it was below my chin, so I couldn't see it. I had my girlfriend take a look and she saw what she thought was letters and took a picture of it with her phone. It was the Roman numeral for six. Truly believed at this point that something was out to get me and went back to leaving the lights on in my room. But after that scratch mark, it suddenly stopped. I don't know if it was trying to send a sign or what. Anyway, fast forward to now, I don't use my lights anymore. But the other day, I was setting up my Xbox just like before and the heater turned on by itself again and I got the uneasy feeling again. I don't know if it's about to start back up again and mess with me, but I'd figured I'd write about it and keep you guys updated. If anyone knows what this could be and why, I would love to hear it because I'm seriously stumped and it's been going on for a long time and has only been getting more and more intense. My family moved here about three weeks ago. It's a really cool house. It's pretty spacious for where it's at. It's got cool features like super nice Wi-Fi, a pool with a slide, and a door system with a passcode lock. It's by far the coolest house I've ever lived in. Anyways, I haven't had a lot of irrational fear in my life. I believe in ghosts and spirits, but I've never had first-hand encounters with them. I think most stories people tell aren't real, and I wonder if mine is. I don't know if it is, but I figured I'd share some details. The first night I got here, I had to take a five hour flight, so I was pretty tired by the time I got home. When I got to the new house, I looked around for a little bit, called my dad, he told me which one was my room, and I came in and went to sleep. I woke up at like 3am with my door wide open and lights on all over the house. I was pretty sure I'd turned at least some of the lights off, so I was kind of anxious. But I also figured it could have just been my mind making it up. I got up, turned off the hallway light, closed the door, and turned off the light in my room. I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't want to go all around the house because I'm a wuss. The next day, I had no problems. I bought a pizza and chilled out by the pool. I was loving living in this mini mansion by myself. A few more days went by, and one night, I was watching Moonlight in my living room when I fell asleep on the couch. I woke up naturally at about 2am on the recliner chair. The lights were off this time rather than on and I knew I'd left them on. I sat there for a moment and then realised there was something moving in the kitchen. I watched in terror as I saw a bald man walking across the kitchen. He had an abnormally large head, almost like a light bulb with this grinning smile. 
The room was illuminated only by the glass screen door to the right of the kitchen. He just started walking back and forth through my kitchen. My heart was pounding. My phone was dead because I fell asleep and I just stared, holding my breath, holding myself completely still, doing my best to hold back my shivers. He kept walking back and forth, opening drawers. He did this for about 10 minutes until he looked over at me and then walked out of the house. When he left, I sprinted upstairs and looked outside, only to see nothing. I figured it was a dream. I went downstairs and checked the door. Yep, the automatic lock is good. There's no way anyone could have gotten in or out. At midnight, my passcode lock refuses entry and you have to have the physical key to get in. I chalked it up to a hallucination and went to bed. The next night, I played some video games online with a buddy of mine. We were having fun until I walked down at about 11 p.m. only to see the front door wide open. I had left earlier to go get some food, but I remembered closing it when I came home. I was unnerved by this, but still thought not a lot of it. I went to sleep about 11 p.m. that night. I was sleeping normally until I woke up at 3 a.m. again to see the lights on outside my room. I swore I had turned them off. I heard footsteps outside walking up and down my hallway. I sat in horror again, lying in my bed, trying not to make a noise. I had thought maybe someone had really gotten into my house when I had left the door open. However, the lights turned off and nobody left the house because I would have heard it out the window. So once again, I figured it was just my mind playing tricks on me. This brings us to last night. Well, more like this morning. Last night, I went out to get food again. When I left my house, I remember closing the door and turning the lock. I heard the click and I left. I ended up going to Five Guys, and when I got home, I was mortified to see the door wide open. This time, I was highly scared. I snuck into my house, closed the door and locked it. I went into my kitchen and grabbed one of those steak carving forks as a weapon and went through the house. I checked each room, turned on all the lights and made sure no one could get out. I called my dad. No good. He didn't pick up. He's in New York, so he was already asleep. I hung out and waited for a while and figured I was just crazy again. I went upstairs and after an hour on my phone, I fell asleep. This morning, I woke up in a rush and saw the man standing in my doorway staring at me, only to sprint away when I got up to chase him. I got up and grabbed the steak fork again and ran after him down the hall for there to be nothing there. This is what prompted me to write this. I saw him in broad daylight and he responded to me following him and threatening him. I figure he's not real, something my mind is making up because I'm here alone. But has anyone had hallucinations like this? What do I do to stop having these? I've had a few small things happen to me over the years but I've always wondered about a cluster of incidents which occurred over a very short period whilst I lived in a dig's house in college. Hopefully, someone may be able to shed some light into what I experienced. It was my first year. I had started college and settled into Diggs accommodation in Dublin, Ireland. Diggs, for anyone who doesn't know, is somewhere students live when in college and usually involves renting a room with a family in their home at a fraction of the cost of college or university accommodation. I was living with an older lady and her two adult sons who were older than me and quite pleasant. The lady herself was nice, if a little old fashioned. And over the first semester, all was well. It wasn't until near the end of my second semester in April that I was left bemused. The first occurrence was something I could only explain as bizarre. It happened when I went to go to the toilet in the middle of the night. I slept upstairs along with the rest of the family. My room was closest to the stairs, with the landing shaped in a U. The bathroom was across the hall at the other end of the U, a good 10 to 15 strides away. I used the toilet and all was well. 
I tried to be as quiet as possible returning to my room to not waken anyone. However, no sooner had I shut the door and turned to make the journey back to my room when what I can only describe as a black fog descended on me. At first I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me in the dark and maybe the sudden movements from getting out of bed had caused me to hallucinate, but no. This was more than a trick of the mind. It was almost as if I was able to physically swipe at it with my hands and see it move coherently as I did. I was panicked, but I didn't feel the need to scream. I tried to fight my way through it, but I barely felt as if I could move. After what felt like 30 or 60 seconds, it cleared. But as it did so, it left me dangerously lingering over the top step of the stairs. I could have sworn it took no more than two or three steps in my panicked days, but I shook myself down and rushed back into my room, locking the door and leaving the night on for the rest of the night. The following morning at breakfast, I mentioned nothing and all was normal. Over the next few days, everything was fine until about a week later. This time it was a dream that scared the living shite out of me. I was asleep in my room when I found myself dreaming of a familiar place my grandmother's home. The house was a typical two-story Irish farmhouse. It had been renovated about 12 years before my dream, but I was witnessing it as it was when I was a young boy. I can remember taking the details of the old stonework in when the front door opened. It was my grandmother, delighted to see me. Come in, she exclaimed, greeting me with a hug as she guided me into her home, as it was when I was a child pre-renovation. It was at this point, I feel I should disclaim my grandmother had been dead 11 years. She took me to a seat at a kitchen table, made me some tea and a sandwich and started talking to me. I can't distinctly say what she told me, but I remember it being extremely positive, along the lines of I'm proud of you and what you've achieved. At this point, I would have been happy for the dream to finish, however, it took a dark twist. I can remember witnessing my grandmother's face beginning to twist and contort into something unrecognisable. I got up to run away, and as I did so, I noticed her feet were not human, but hooves which I imagined were goats. As this being who was once my grandmother took notice of my horror at their hooves, they echoed a piercing, bellowing screech of laughter, and it was at this point I awoke. This wasn't like waking from any nightmare, or even sleep paralysis, oh no. I awoke to find myself upright in my bed, sobbing uncontrollably, with my digs lady banging on my door to see if I was okay. After a minute or so of composing myself, I threw on my dressing gown and opened the door to chat to her. I could see that she was visibly concerned, and it was obvious to her that I had been crying. She asked what had happened, and I explained I just had a bad dream. I could see she was apprehensive to even question me further, but I sensed she really wanted to see if I was okay. She looked at me alarmingly and said she had heard me crying for a few minutes. I looked back at her horrified, but managed to pass it off with a joke, telling her, if you don't laugh at the nightmare, I'd had you might as well cry. She smiled and told me if I needed anything, just give her a call. I entered my room again, now puzzled at how I could have been crying in my sleep. But I chalked it off as a freak episode and got myself ready for college. A day later, I returned back to my family home for the weekend and told my mother of the dream about my grandmother. I left out the eerie ending and she simply told me to say a few Hail Marys for my grandmother. That was a Saturday and that night, the final incident of this saga occurred. Again, it happened whilst I was asleep, but this time in my own bed in my own house. I awoke too early in the morning for my liking on a Sunday. I looked at my watch on my bedside locker to see it was five-ish. I was still half asleep, but I could feel a burning sensation coming from my legs. I gave my leg an instinctive itch and was ready to roll over and go back to sleep. However, when I touched my leg, I immediately could feel what could only be described as a seven or eight inch long scratch mark on my inner thigh. It was the kind of scratch you'd associate with an animal, but my dog didn't sleep inside our house. It was quite obviously fresh, and my own nails were much too blunt from biting them 
to even attempt to cause a mark so striking. I kind of ignored this incident, and a week later, I moved out of my dig's house, and I've not had any kind of experiences, even remotely as wild as those since. At the time, I was at a loss for an explanation, and to this day, I still am. I never brought up anything that happened with my Diggs family, nor with my own family, apart from telling my mom a vague version of my dream. This happened in January of 2019. My stepdad had been in our family's life for 30 years before he was diagnosed with cancer. He never had any biological children, but he had me and my sister and we couldn't have asked for a better stepdad or granddad for our children. I was with him when he was diagnosed and with him for all his treatments. From the very beginning, there was no question of who would take care of him. It was going to be me. He and my mother were split up at the time and it just seemed natural that I would be the one to do it because of how close we were. And honestly, I considered it an honor. Unfortunately, his prognosis was not very good and they gave him less than a year to live. He barely made it six months after his diagnosis. He was in the hospital the last six days of his life. He had a DNR and as hard as it was, I didn't argue with him about it. Two days before he passed, he was in and out of consciousness and was barely able to talk. Last night, he was able to communicate that he really wanted me to go home and check on the dogs. This was just after three in the morning. I told him I would do that and then I'd be right back. He gave a small smile and nodded. It took 20 minutes for me to get home and 10 minutes after walking through the door, the hospital called and said he had passed. I felt so guilty until I thought he knew there was already someone with the dogs, but he insisted that I check on them. Perhaps he didn't want me there at the time. I don't know. I still don't know. Now, what I do know is the morning after he passed, I had a missed call from his phone that had been in my purse the whole time he was in the hospital. The call was made at 3.47 a.m. And the voicemail that was left said, thank you for everything, sweetheart. I love you. That message was left in my stepdad's perfect loving voice. Not the raspy, out of breath, strained voice he had moments before he died. Some people have said that it may have been an old message that I had just received that morning, but either way, I thought it was amazing. My skepticism regarding the paranormal and supernatural all changed about three years ago, as of writing this, right on the day my son was born. At the time, I worked the night shift, so I was dozing in and out of sleep during the middle of the day. My wife was laid up in bed next to me, and it was fairly quiet in the house that day. Whilst coming in and out of sleep, I got an overwhelming feeling that a third person had entered the room. I wish words could explain it better than that, but it was just an undeniable sense that someone was there. It felt like a warm, loving energy. As I was coming back into consciousness, a loud burst of light exploded in front of my eyes, and I heard a loud bang. I had experienced exploding head syndrome on a few occasions before, so it didn't alarm me too much. What did alarm me was my wife, sitting next to me in labour and screaming in pain at the top of her lungs. Rushed her to the hospital, and she had to give birth right then and there without any sort of pain medication. It was definitely hard to watch. My son was born over a month early that day, but has since grown up strong and healthy, despite his premature birth. I cannot explain what it was on that day. An angel? My son's soul entering his body? Me sensing my wife's impending delivery? I don't know, but to this day, I've never felt anything similar. I know it might be a disappointing story, since it doesn't involve really seeing anything, but I'll swear to the day I die that I felt a supernatural presence in the room that day, moments before my son came into the world. At a young age, before I was ever in school, I remember I had an open mind. 
so clear to see everything. My dad knew there were ghosts. He was raised to believe that. His mom is a Southern Baptist, but we only believe in light magic. We are also Cherokee. My grandma's grandma was full-blooded. She passed away with jet black hair at her elder age. My mom, on the other hand, didn't believe in anything supernatural. You don't talk about it in front of her. She was one of a kind, her way or no way. She was also very jealous of me for no reason or none that I could find to be jealous of. I'm an only child, so that made it more rough growing up. So I'm young and I remember seeing all these little people, little doorways they came in and out of that no one other than me can see. They would talk to me. They lived in the walls. I'd be fully awake playing outside in the bright sun and they'd be outside with me. They watched over me, protected me, and I'd also talk to them. One day, my father asked me who I was talking to. I remember the way he acted when I told him. He told me those people are not real. It was my imagination. He told me to ignore them. They were scaring my mom. It broke my heart. I didn't understand. It felt real, looked real. They would run and hide when my parents came into the room I was in, sealing their doors off. Parents would leave and they'd come back out. This was back in the 80s. My dad worked, mom stayed home and took care of me. We only had one TV. Mom controlled it like anything else in the house. She would watch black and white war movies, Shirley Temple, Gone with the Wind, etc. She wouldn't even allow me to watch Old Yeller. I wouldn't know anything about supernatural stuff. It was not in our home. I still to this day miss them. I feel them. I don't see them. I just wondered if they had a name. Was it a bunch of ghosts? They dress in solid colours. I don't think they wore shoes. So this is a bit of an older story. I didn't get to thinking about it recently, but when I remembered it, I realized there hadn't been an encounter for a while. I thought I should reach out and ask for advice or thoughts. We've lived in our current house for about eight years now. In our last home, we were stalked by or always aware of something living with us. There are several stories there, but that's not what this is about. We built our new house through a housing program help build your house and live in it for a reduced price. Suffice to say, my mum and I, who are sensitive to spirits, were relieved after no longer feeling what was in the last home. A brand new home without previous inhabitants to soak up energy or emotion from. Within a month of living there, I noticed a presence. Interestingly, it wasn't humanoid, which is what we're used to. I have a dark grey cat who follows people just to watch them, and a brown tabby cat at the time we first saw the spirit. The first night I encountered the spirit, I was brushing my teeth when I thought I saw my cat walk into the bathroom with me. It was a dark cat-sized thing, so I naturally assumed it was my grey cat. I turned and saw whatever it was zip into the hallway. I jumped out into the hallway to reaffirm what I saw, but whatever it was was now gone. To describe that split second, there was a small creature that had been by the door, but when I left the bathroom, it sort of lost its shape. I thought it was a piece of cloth or laundry that had been knocked into the hallway, but obviously it wasn't there when I went and looked at it. Later, my mother mentioned seeing what seemed to be a ghost cat that changed shape and disappeared under her bed or in her closet as a piece of cloth. Sometimes people would come over and ask why we didn't introduce them to our third cat, or fourth, after we actually got our third. Sometimes, when discussing ghosts and or cats, a guest would have a blank look over right their face, and they would ask if we had seen a black cat in the hallway, or if there was a black cat in the house. It was a little funny when you know they realised what they saw wasn't a physical form or really there. I've had friends stay over and mention a black cat, and one explicitly described a cat shape climbing on my clothes in my closet. We later discussed it as a family to find out my little sister had seen the spirit too. My father dismissed it, but that would be expected by at least one family member. 
We've all had separate experiences with the spirits and have all had guests who mentioned it. Our other cats were never bothered by the spirits and it never seemed to bother them either. My mother dubbed him Chintz because he always would turn into a cloth shape when spotted and disappear. He's a cat if you don't look directly at him or acknowledge him, but quickly turns into a cloth or moldable shape once he realises you've spotted him. We assumed he was a neighbourhood cat that had passed away and found a new family or new cats to hang around with. Unfortunately, we stopped seeing him. I think he was still there. Sometimes I'd catch a black, small shadow moving in the corner of my eye, but couldn't catch it if it was chintz. I could still feel him sometimes, hopping onto the bed when there was no weight shift and no cat when you looked. I guess sometimes he's just content that we know he's there, but doesn't have the energy to show himself physically. So backstory, I believe in ghosts. My old house used to be a barn for my aunt's horses until it was refitted for living. My parents lived there for 10 years until we moved in 2009, but my aunt died a month after I was born in 02. A few days after a quarter dropped and rolled to the exact threshold of my parents' room. For the next seven years, my sister could hear footsteps above her room at nights, which should have been impossible because that house had the first floor, a three foot crawl space and then the attic. You couldn't hear somebody in the attic, but the crawling sounds different from heavy thuds from a boot. We moved in 2009 and weird stuff happens here too. My sister almost every night heard a person walk from my brother's upstairs room down the hall to her room, but never back. One time when her boyfriend was watching the house, he swore on his life he saw a faint woman looking around the corner of my sister's room right at him one night when he woke up and after seeing a picture was convinced it was my aunt. So I was probably 10, watching TV in our main living room, which shares a wall with the bottom of my sister's room. I'm sitting there eating when suddenly I hear a huge boom, boom, boom. I instantly get freaked because it sounds like it's coming from a stomping 300 pound guy. I brush it off, still wary when I hear it again, slightly louder with a few more. I knew it couldn't be a robber because her window is over a flat wall next to our backyard with like a 10 foot drop. Rolling that out, I get so freaked out, I book it out of that room into the garage, across our cul-de-sac and bang on my best friend's door and tell him he needs to come hear this. When he gets in, we watch TV for a while, but nothing happens. It happened for a while after that, a couple of years, but has since stopped. Every now and again we hear something, but we know it's not a person. It was the summer of 2005, and I was about to enter high school. Having just turned 14, and now having access to the internet at home, I spent a lot of that summer staying up late at night. I used to go to bed around 10pm, but now it's different. 12am, 1am, and sometimes even 2. My parents didn't care, as long as I didn't do anything too crazy. So I mostly spent that time playing games and talking to friends online. I never really thought much about it at the time, but every once in a while it would get late and I'd randomly spook myself. I guess it was just the weird feeling of being up alone so late. Nothing never really came of that, nor did I expect it to. But then, one night, things changed. Around 2 to 2.30 a.m., I remember looking to my left at my doorway and seeing what looked like a beam of light step out of my sight. As soon as I saw this, I'll admit that I freaked, and I ran and pulled the covers from my bed over my head actually ended up sleeping in the living room that night because my room just freaked me out. I remember friends asking why I vanished that night, but I felt stupid telling them. Obviously, I was just tired and seeing things, so I kept it a secret. Nothing else happened to me for quite a while. I didn't tell anyone about what happened, but I started hearing whispers around the house. No, not ghosts, my parents. 
They began talking to each other when they assumed I couldn't hear. And the things I heard them say completely caught me off guard. It wasn't until years later they were willing to tell me. But apparently, around the same time, they too were seeing and hearing strange things. One night, my dad walked into my room and gave me a funny look before walking out. According to him, he followed my mom there. But my mom was nowhere to be seen. She was actually in our room sound asleep. My dad told my mom this story, assuming I couldn't hear, but I was listening. I also found out about the neighbours seeing a lady sitting out under our front yard tree. I heard about stories of strange sounds and things going missing. Eventually, I too told my parents what I had seen that night, which was when they came clean with me. After that, over the next 10 to 15 years, things continued to be just a bit weird. One night we watched my doorknob turn and let our dog into my room. Explained how she kept getting in when we were gone. Things continued to go missing, only to reappear in odd places. Around Christmas, music boxes would play on their own another time, and the fan started moving slowly on its own as a dark shadow crossed it. Things just continued to happen, and still to this day. We came to call this thing Elsie the lady who used to live in the house. But this is only a fraction of the things that were to come. While I never did see her again personally, that doesn't mean others haven't. After the whole music box and ceiling fan things, things kind of went quiet for a while. There was one night when my cousin was over and my closet door flew open on its own. But that could have been something that just fell and knocked it. It wasn't really until the Christmas of 2019 that something would happen to me again. Still living at home at the time, I was once again up late at night playing a game and talking to some friends online. This wasn't unusual for me at all, but typically I'd go to bed before 2.30. That night, however, I was wrapped up in the story of my new game and I lost track of time. So I went to go to bed and as I was about to turn the light off, I felt something hit the back of my leg shocked the heck out of me because I wasn't expecting it. But what's weird was what it was. It seemed to be the broken wheel off of my old desk chair I got rid of. Confused as heck and freaked out both at the same time, I took some pictures of it to prove I wasn't crazy and instantly sent them to my friend I'd been talking to. I have no idea where it came from or how it hit the back of my leg. Chair had been gone for at least five to six years at that point. After this, the things that happened were just more weird, but nothing major. The cat sleeps in the basement, for example, with the door locked. And there's been multiple times where he's gotten himself out and jumped on me to wake me up. Could chalk that up to forgetting to put him in the basement, but when you personally double check the night before, only to be woken up by the cat, that's just weird. But yeah, the wheel thing was the last real thing to ever happen to me in that house. My fiancé, on the other hand. We warned her that weird things happened in the house, and during one of the first nights she stayed over, she experienced it for herself. She was sleeping on the couch on Saturday, and I was in my room. That's when we both heard and were woken up by the front door opening and closing. I instantly assumed it was someone letting the cat outside and rolled over and went back to sleep. As for her, well, she sat up on the couch and looked only to see my mom in a white nightgown standing at the door, just looking out with her hands up against the glass. She thought, that's weird, what is she doing? And then just lied back down and went to sleep. Yeah, my mom doesn't own a white nightgown, nor has she ever been told the details of stories of what had been seen in that house. Just like the time my dad thought my mom walked into my room because he saw the back of her nightgown. Or the random time another cousin of mine claimed she saw a lady in white walk into our kitchen. What she saw matched up exactly with what other people had seen. And yes, my mom never did get up that morning to let the cat out. It wasn't there. Since then, we've both moved out of that house. And so far at our new one, nothing strange has happened. My parents still live there, so more things could happen. But for now, that's pretty much everything I can remember.
I've lived in one house for nine years and lots of creepy stuff had happened there and I always get chills talking about it. In grade two or three, I was cleaning my room and I had one of those things that would lift up the bed and you could put stuff under it. I had a sock under there and I started to crawl under my bed to grab it until I heard a female voice humming right behind me. The only thing right behind me were dolls. The dolls were very old and were from my great great grandma. That's not the only time something happened with my dolls. My cousins were staying with us for about a day or so. I don't remember why, but I think my oldest cousin was babysitting us. When they were leaving, my dolls were all facing towards the wall, since I felt uncomfortable at night because they were always looking at my bed. My cousin had checked out the dolls and I watched her turn the doll towards the wall. After dropping them off at their house, we had left to go home. After arriving home, I had gone to my room to go to bed. I walked into my room to see three of my dolls facing towards my bed. My mum and I had always experienced paranormal things in that house, but in grade four, I had moved to a small town. We had moved into a townhouse and we were the last on the row. I never felt anything weird in that house until grade five when it all started. I would always get unknown scratch marks and random marks. It started out small and then it grew. I was home alone one day since school was off and my mom was at work. It was during COVID when this happened. I was walking up my room to grab something or just chill in there until there was a huge bang from my closet. As I said before, we were the last one in the row. I was scared and confused. Another time, I had made ice. I was using a knife to get it out because I was struggling. I got a few and put them in my drink and as I was about to turn on the TV, until the knife I was using got thrown across the room, I started to cry because of how scared I was. After a few minutes, I got up to pick the knife. I took a peek at the ice just to see it's still frozen. A few months later, we moved into an apartment and nothing has happened. But this summer, I went and visited my grandma. She lived in a 120 year old house, a bunch of creaks and spooky stuff. The first day, my grandma was showing me the room I'd be sleeping in. While passing a different room, I could hear three knocks coming from inside the room. A few hours later, I was going to use the washroom. After doing my business on the toilet, I went to go wash my hands and while I was washing my hands, the door had flung open. There was nothing that could have opened it. There was no gush of wind, nothing. I ran back to my room, scared. There was this one room that the cat slept in that would make me feel like someone was watching me. And the owner before my grandparents had moved in, never finishing the building. And the room the cat slept in was the room they didn't finish. After staying there for a while, I started to hear people walking in the hallways when I'm the only one upstairs, since my grandparents slept downstairs. When I was little, I lived on the grounds of a very old manor house in the UK. The manor itself was used as a college for teaching courses and was fully fitted out to cater for people to stay for week-long courses. There were bedrooms and a fully functioning restaurant as well as all the course rooms. My dad actually ran the place, that's why we lived on the grounds. The house came with the job kind of thing. Anyway, at Christmas, when my grandparents would come and stay, they would stay down at the manor house as we didn't have enough bedrooms at our actual house and it was only a five minute walk away. So one Christmas, my granddad woke up at like 6am and saw a little girl next to him. At first he suspected it was me, having wandering down to see them. But as he came to more, thinking he needed to get me home before my parents freaked out, he realised the little girl was wearing a bonnet and a long, white, old-fashioned nightdress and looked nothing like me. She smiled at him and touched his hand. Then a lady in old-fashioned clothes walked through a wall again smiling at him, picked up the little girl and walked back through the wall. My grandma slept through the entire thing and although he said he was never afraid, he knew she would be and would refuse to come for any future visits so he never told her. He did however tell my parents who had already had many strange occurrences at the manor house so he knew they would believe him. 
My dad said the thing that gives this story so much credibility is that the rooms they were staying in used to be the old nursery and the nanny's quarters. My grandparents had no knowledge of this at the time. He said it was all very calm and peaceful and not scary, albeit somewhat unnerving. In the past, I was quite fascinated by all things spooky. I was a horror film buff, loved a good book about true hauntings, and for many years I was a goth. And during that time, I learned something kids are creepy, especially little girls, although granted Damien from The Omen wasn't exactly a ray of sunshine. But generally speaking, if there's a little girl in a horror film, you know at some point she's going to be climbing up walls or projectile vomiting over priests. That's just the way it is. Bearing this in mind, I can't deny that when I found out I was pregnant with my eldest, somewhere in the back of my mind, there was an uneasy thought, what if she turns out to be creepy? Of course, the second she was born, that thought vanished entirely, and I was completely wrapped up in how freaking adorable and perfect and cute she was. She was quite possibly the most beautiful baby in the world ever, but you get the idea. Not a creepy bone in her chubby little body. That is, until now. She's now coming up to four years old. She's extremely bright and extraordinarily eloquent for a three-year-old. This means that sometimes she comes out with things you wouldn't expect a child her age to say. Up until now, when she has said something surprisingly clever, I must admit I do tend to be incredibly proud and secretly smug. But recently... I've kind of been wishing she wasn't quite so eloquent as some of the random clever things she's been saying. She's been saying are truly terrifying. I mean like stomach churning. We're going to need an exorcist terrifying. It started maybe a month or two ago. She started talking about Leo, her invisible friend. Wonderful, I thought to myself. Imaginary friends are creepy as. as this is always how it starts in the films. Now I knew she has a friend at school called Leo, so I just put it down to an overactive imagination. Even when she would tell me that Leo had climbed into bed with me and was hiding under the duvet by my feet. I didn't let it get to me. It's just harmless play, I would say to myself, and then I'd give myself a mental pat on the back for being so sensible and grown up about it. There was a time I would have freaked out about invisible little boys crawling into bed with me, but not now. No. Now I was a fearless mum. After a few weeks, Sarah showed up. To, to my daughter, I mean. Of course, we couldn't see her. Just like that cheeky little bed-stealing scamp Leo. So now there were two. Fabulous. But just like she had an actual friend called Leo, she also knows Sarah, her dance teacher. So again, we just put it down to our imagination. All was well in the world with Leo and Sarah. They would chase around the house or have imaginary water balloon fights and hardly ever do anything creepy, like perch on windowsills during the night to watch us sleep. Then a week ago, we had my husband's parents over for dinner. We were enjoying a nice family dinner, when out of nowhere, my daughter started talking about her friends. Except now, there are three. Now, there's a Clement. She doesn't know Clement. There's no one by that name at her school. He's not a character from one of her books or from any of the cartoons she watches. I have no explanation for Clement, and she's not sure who she is either, really. Leo and Sarah are brother and sister, but Clement is just naughty. That's all we know about him. I would have much preferred him to be funny or silly, but not at all. He's naughty. Great. And then she blurts out, and you know Leo is dead. Sarah killed him. Dead like your granddad, mommy. My mother-in-law and I just I stared at each other, not saying a word, but safe to say... We knew we were both thinking, what the actual fuck? My lovely husband senses my absolute horror at what my beautiful angel has just announced at the dinner table and tries to come to the rescue. But it's just pretend, darling, isn't it? He's okay, really. He's not really dead, he says. No, daddy, he's really dead. Sarah killed him, she merrily replies, in between two mouthfuls of chips. I felt a bit sick at this point, and wasn't looking forward to sharing my bedroom with my daughter and her new mates at bedtime. So as we're getting ready for bed, 
she started talking about them again. This time, adding that we have an angry lady called Violet living in our attic space. She's always cross and has purple lips. A fun fact about our attic space is it's not actually closed off by a wall. It just has a see-through banister to stop anything falling out. So I can see everything in our attic that overlooks my bed. I now know I'm never sleeping again. Awesome. So I said, sweetheart, can we not talk about them now? They're only pretend. They're not real. What she said next and how she said it will probably haunt me forevermore. Her face dropped into a scowl. She came very close to my face, squinted her eyes and said, they are real. Then started laughing and added, they're shouting, mummy. They're always shouting. As she grew up, we heard less and less about her invisible friends, but I must admit, not a night goes by that I don't look up at the attic space and imagine an angry violet staring back at me. My mom has experienced the same thing. So has her mom, and it goes on and on with the women in our family. I've talked to relatives that have passed on along with seeing an apparition of them. My grandmother has since ignored it until I asked her about someone who claims to be her brother and talks about very harsh family details, sometimes refuses to tell me a name. I live with my grandmother and have had issues for a while with this one thing, I guess I should call it. At first, it was only appearing in photos, but now it's making the energy of the house feel heavy. It stays in the basement bedroom, and when I go down there, it bangs on the door, tries to turn the door handle, and at night, sometimes it growls and in a deep voice goes, Hello? I'll hear breathing in my room sometimes, and my dogs refuse to go into the basement and refuse to go into my room. I feel so angry all the time, and it follows me out of the house. I can tell because my eyes get watery. I feel heavy and I get goosebumps along with just the feeling of something constantly behind me. This hasn't bothered me until it decided to mess with my nana. My nana is a sweet lady that doesn't need any issues with the paranormal. Well, the other night, she woke up with the feeling of being choked and seeing something stand above her bed. She closed her eyes and said the Lord's Prayer and it went away. She has me go downstairs now to do the laundry fold the clothes and clean up. Well, I guess I messed up pretty bad because I finally saw the apparition in daylight. It's always been a feeling or only seeing it at night. It was standing in the corner staring at me as I was folding laundry and I immediately got angry at it for messing with my nana. So I looked at it and went, you know what? Fuck you. You're just one big spooky pussy ass ghost. I'm going to kick your ass for fucking with my nanny, you little bitch. Just fucking watch me do it. I turned my back to it so I could load the washer and the bedroom door slammed shut. Now, every night it watches me sleep and keeps reaching out to touch me. Me and my wife recently moved into an old army home. They're offered to all acting soldiers in my country and are very cheap. Most of them were built in the 60s and 80s. Our house is at the back of a much larger section. At the top of the hill and overlooking a valley with a dense native forest below. It's very cosy and offers a lot of privacy with no immediate neighbours and a good view. At first, I had a couple of weird encounters that left me scratching my head. Such as when I was walking from the front door to my car when I heard a loud banging on my tin roof, as if something hard like an acorn had landed on it and was bouncing down. Whatever it was, it bounced off the roof and into the branches of the tree in our front yard, which began to sag under the weight. There are no branches hanging over our house that could have dropped anything, and I couldn't see anything fall off the roof, nor did anything land on the ground after it made the tree branches sag. I thought it was weird and mentioned it to my wife at the time, but just sort of brushed it off. Then there were the windows in my living room. Me and my wife live alone. I had our windows open to let the breeze in because it was a hot summer's night. 
and I decided to close them since it was time for bed. As I closed them, my wife called me outside to the backyard, since she had spotted the International Space Station moving across the night sky. After I came back in, I sat down on the couch and I noticed the curtains were flapping in the wind. I walked over the check and the window I had just closed was wide open. I know for certain I had closed it just moments ago and my wife was outside the whole time, so I know she couldn't have opened it. I asked if she saw me close that window and she said she was standing in the doorway and watched me do it. I kept asking her if she was messing with me, but I just couldn't figure out how it could have happened. The last and most troubling incident is what prompted me to make this post. Last night, I went to bed just after my wife, who was already asleep. I lay in bed browsing my phone, when suddenly I noticed I could hear what sounded like heavy breathing. I stopped and listened for a moment, assuming it was just my wife snoring or something, but she was sleeping right next to me, and this sounded like it was coming from the far corner of the bedroom. I focused on the sound for what felt like several minutes, while being paralysed with fear. I was convinced someone was standing at the end of my bed. I woke up my wife. She was half asleep, until I said it sounded like someone was in the house, which made her bolt up. And then she said she could hear it too. I then turned on all the lights, and went around the house checking our locks and cupboards. I didn't get much sleep that night. Back in 2006-8, the Harbour Inn pub in Kent, UK, had a paranormal investigator and a tarot reader in for the evening, doing mostly readings upstairs where the restaurant was. While I was having my tarot done, the investigator stopped and looked over to one of the pillars. He said there was a ghostly figure in a Guy Fawkes dress standing behind the pillar and watching us. Apparently, this figure wasn't nice. At first, I couldn't see anything, but then I saw a shadow of a figure on the side of the pillar. When we finished my reading, we went back down to the bar downstairs. As I was walking down the stairs, I looked up and saw the face of a man. I can't remember what he looked like, but he had an old hat on. The owner at the time hated the pub because he kept seeing a lady in an old dress, and whenever he worked, she was randomly there. Later in the evening, the investigator and I went back upstairs and tried talking to this bad ghost man. He kept knocking on doors. I was also told that there was a little boy that kept following me around the pub. The investigator told him that his name was Charlie and that I reminded him of someone he knew. One point in the evening, we were talking with my hands dropped over the chair when I felt a little hand grab around two of my fingers. Nowadays, it's been run by someone else and often I wonder if the new owners have had any strange happenings. When I walk past, I look up at the window and smile up to Charlie. 